Hey there, everybody. P.T. Pop here with all four lobes in my brain securely bound behind my back. And today on a mind revolution where I lead you out of the rabbit hole, one grain of truth at a time, I introduce you to Cleveland area artist, songwriter, poet, and singer, and painter, Juniper Vanellis. Thanks for coming today, Juniper. I'm glad to have you here. I really, I really appreciate you coming all the way down here. How far did you have to come? Just half an hour. It's no biggie. Oh, that's all? That's not yeah, bad. Yeah, you know, what I think is funny is people in Cleveland, how they always talk about, you know, distances and east side, west side, you know, and oh yeah. my God, that's on the west side. And I just think it's odd because, okay, so you just get in your car and drive. Because I lived in L.A. and everything is a long Oh, did way you live out there? I think... Nope. The Take reason why I went to L.A. is a more interesting thing for your viewers. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. That would be cool to hear. Let me tell you the story. Um, when I was 17, um, I ran away from home with the gypsies. Oh, wow. Um, there was a street fair that I went to and met these uh, musicians who were traveling around in a painted-up old school bus. And... Uh, one of the guys was eating fire and they were all dressed in these like, you know, velvet and vests and, uh, you know, outrageous, uh, outfits. And, um, so I thought this is pretty cool. And, uh, so after the show, we got to talking and they invited me to come meet everybody and, and come onto the bus and the, the bus had all been, you know, gutted and was like, uh, you know, there was beds in the living area and it was all like, painted psychedelic, you know, tie-dye curtains, the whole thing. And like 10 of them were traveling around in this bus promoting uh, their album. They had a, a, an album on Mercury Records back then. And uh, so I ended up falling in love with the keyboard player and ran away from home a week after my 17th birthday. Oh, wow. And so we traveled around uh, in this painted up bus and I was just a girlfriend. And they were playing in college campuses and, and communes and that kind of thing, playing mm -hmm. this original Aquarian gypsy rock music. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after a while, they, they said, okay, try singing this backup line. And I became a backup singer. And it was funny because they were all like dark haired, dark eyed, you know, very gypsy looking. And here I was this blonde haired, blue eyed Viking woman. <laughs> so um, it wasn't long before I ended up being the lead singer in the band. And uh, we got out to L.A. And Cass Elliott from the Mamas and the Papas was a good friend of theirs. And we ended oh, wow. up living with Cass up in Laurel Canyon wow. until we got settled in Los Angeles. And, uh, yeah, so I, um, I was in that band for several years. So it was called Romany. And then producers told the band, the band concept is cool, but there's your star. And uh, I eventually ended up leaving the band, breaking up with Nissan, and signing my first record contract and wow. pursuing uh, a music career in Los Angeles where I had a Grammy nomination. Wow. I had a, a video on MTV, did a lot of national touring, did a lot of studio work, uh, working with various different artists. And... Uh, did that for many, many years out in Los Angeles. So that's why I was moving around, living in different locations. Wow, that's fascinating. That was cool. It was very so, cool. So what song was nominated for a Grammy? The song was called Lies, and that was also the title song for the album, and that was the same song that I had, the MTV video, which was back then, that was a big deal. Oh, uh, yeah. Medium rotation. So it got played multiple times a day. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then there came a point when I just kind of got fed up with the pretentiousness of living in Los Angeles. Yeah. People yeah. Were just, um, it's like who, you know, who you, who you hang out with, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. what parties you go to. It just it was pretentious. Oh, sure. Um, so I moved back to Ohio. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking at first. I was kind of just thinking, oh, it'd be pretty, you know, this, I could see the season changes and yeah, it took me a while to adjust to being back because so, uh, the first thing it really hit me was is that people just are different. It's a different pace of life here. Oh, in yeah. The Midwest. 
so you you grew up you started off in Ohio. I grew up, yeah. What what part of the town? In Shaker Heights. Oh, went to Shaker, Shaker Schools. Okay. And uh, yeah, so you know, I came back and like moved in with my parents, which was weird, you know, after being on my own all yeah. those years. Um and ended up staying, fell in love, got married, um, did the mommy thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I was still singing. I was singing in local bands. Sure. And uh, also, when my kids were in school, I would go sing jingles and commercials for radio and TV. Wow. Did like Alvin's Jewelers. Uh, oh, yeah. Giorgio's Pizza, Burger King, you know, you know, some pretty notable yeah, yeah. local jingles and commercials sure. for radio and TV. And it was nice because it was good money and I didn't have to be out late at night. So that was pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. But uh, yeah, you know... Um, Singing, you know, art was always a hobby of mine. Mm -hmm. And singing was, you know, what I had pursued for my career. Sure, sure. But um, it was getting, you know, about five years ago that I decided to just kind of throw myself full time into being an artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, then like music was just like a hobby. And I yeah. was painting every single day. I still paint nearly every day. Oh, wow. So. So did you, is Juniper your legal name or is that a No, uh, it's not name? my legal name, but. Uh, is that the name you used in California? Well, yes. Um, you know, I've been known by Juniper a lot longer than I was my birth name. And I won't even tell it to you because <laughs> I don't resonate with it. Yeah. But uh, when I was living in L.A., I wasn't planning on it. I was just sitting in a Thai restaurant having dinner one evening and the name Juniper jumped into my head and it just, it was like Juniper, that's who you are, Juniper. And I was born in June and I said, I really like that. And I took it on as my stage name. This was early on when I was in Los Angeles and trying to kind of mm -hmm. get my identity, you know, my stage thing yeah. happening. So, um, yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. uh, people, you know, all my friends, People who've known me the longest, you know, um, call me June or Juniper. Yeah. Um, my family doesn't. <laughs> they still want to call me by my birth name. No, that's understandable. It's a beautiful name, and I Thank I you. thought it was something to do with ter terrestrial or like <laughs> like like uh, uh, Jupiter. No, not Jupiter. <laughs> not Jupiter. No. Okay. Because there seems to be a lot of you know we'll get to it later, but there seems to be a lot of symbolism in your paintings. Well, there uh, definitely is. Yeah. Yes. So, but um. So you and I have a mutual friend, uh, friends, Bob and Debbie Carruthers. Yeah, yeah. And how did you meet them? I was working on a recording project, mm -hmm. one of many projects here yep. locally. And um, someone had told me about their studio back when the studio was up and running. Yeah. And so um, I went out and met Bob and, of course, then met Debbie um, and done several projects there at their studio and mm -hmm. then i got invited to their annual picnics every yeah, year yeah so it's just that kind of thing you know? they're, they're great people because sure I, I uh i recorded a whole bunch of music with bob in yeah. his in his barn there yeah and oh, i love that studio oh yeah it's awesome i remember yeah. the first time i went to it i just was i can't even describe the feeling Oh, yeah. It was just like, yes, I want to record here because a friend of mine introduced me to him. Mm -hmm. And just, it, I, I was just like, wow, this, I never thought of a barn yeah. and a studio and a barn. It seemed yeah. so. It, it was just yeah. a beautiful studio. And I think it's still there, but uh, I don't believe they've been using it as a recording studio. No. I, I Many he, years now. He's had me in there every now and then over the last 10 years. Uh, I moved back to Ohio from Arizona 10 years ago, and he's okay. had me in three or four times. He just. I think it's bits and pieces of it are still around. Mm -hmm. you know, he's got, uh, he does most everything on a laptop now. And, yeah. You know, things like most of us do. But yeah, they're great people. And I'm sorry to hear about Debbie being yeah. so sick. And that's been very, yeah, it's very sad and shocking. Yeah, yeah it very is. It really yeah. is. Um, and let me let's see here. On your website, yeah, you say, I like to describe my work as a sacred journey to open portals of the imagination and self-healing. Some have called it visionary art, and some refer to my work as me uh, medicine painting. Yeah. So so you 
you paint with the intention of trying to heal people or show them a, like a, give them a healing vision or a sense of healing? Um, I do paint with intentions. I use a technique called intentional creativity. Okay. And to begin with, um, I create a sacred space in my studio where whatever that is on that day, it might be just lighting a candle, it might be putting on music, it might be putting rose petals in my flower water, or in my paint water. Mm-hmm. Um, it might be, uh, you know, smudging or lighting incense. or But anyway, after I kind of create this sacred space, and, and it's very symbolic, um, it's wherever I'm at, whatever I'm feeling emotionally, whatever I'm worried or concerned about. Uh-huh. If I'm thinking about someone else, you know, um, it's, I'll touch the canvas. I hold the brush with those thoughts and those feelings and those emotions, and I infuse the brush. I touch the canvas, infuse it, and the paintbrush becomes sort of like a magic wand. It's like I infuse the whole thing with my intentions, be that for personal healing, be that for anyone who views it, be that for something that I'm concerned and praying for a loved one or for her world peace or any other thing in between. Um, so, yes, um, what I, I like to think of my paintings as visual prayers. Mm. And so that not only am I processing just an intention of something that I want or that I, you know, I'm praying for, but also sometimes if there's frustration or worry or fear or anger or, you know, just an emotion, um, I make a mark that represents that on Mm -hmm. the canvas. Sure. And then I say, well, all right, now we have to transform that. I want to, I want to let that go. I want to heal that or I'm sending healing to someone else, whatever my intention is, I'll make another mark. I might, you know, let's say that I have a f- emotion or f- a fear, paint it a red mark. And these are all the underpaintings. This is not even the actual image. I'll make a mark which represents that or many marks. And then I might paint over it with, let's say blue, mm-hmm. spritz it with water and let it drip, o- drip down over it. And it, sort of represents, symbolizes symbolically a transformation, a healing. I'm shifting an emotion. I'm shifting a thought pattern. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, this continues on in layers and layers and over weeks or months where um, I'm transforming thoughts, feelings. Sometimes when I'm feeling frustrated, I'll go to the canvas and I call them prayer dots. I'm just making dots or making strokes or marks are moving with no like, oh, this is going to be a landscape or this is going so, to be a portrait. It's all just movement it, and it's line all and sponta- color. It's all spontaneous. It's all spontaneous. And that is all in the underpainting, which mm-hmm. oftentimes looks nothing like what the painting turns out to be. So you don't you don't plan no. The color scheme, you don't plan no. the composition. It all happens spontaneously and comes I mean, out. Sometimes wow. if I'm doing a portrait or something, you know, sure, which I don't sure. do a lot of, but I can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then there's some planning involved. But generally at this early stage, because I'm just infusing it with intentions and thoughts, that's what medicine painting is. Um, wow. And so it's in there, whether you see it or not. It's like... It's like if you walk into a room and somebody's upset, they don't necessarily have to tell you. You can just feel something's off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, so when people look at my paintings, I've been told, and it's my intention, that they f- they are moved. Like I said, a visual prayer. They f- get a sense of something healing or transformational when they just look at it, even if they don't know the story about mm-hmm. it. But there's layers and layers of all those processes sure. um, infused in before eventually something clicks where I'll start getting information. Like uh, 
I'll just know this has got to be washed down with like blue. This is, and there's a lot of blue in my paintings. Yeah, I was going to ask you about <laughs> that. There's, there's, that's a dominant color yeah. in most of your compositions. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then, uh, you know, I'll start to get pieces of information and then I'll go and paint that in. Then I get more detailed, then mm -hmm. I get more specific. A lot of that stuff gets painted over. Most of it gets painted over. But pieces of it will show through. That's why, like, my paintings have uh, layers because there's glazes. Yeah. Yes. So now you you were nice enough to bring me a print of clock uh, the clockmaker's daughter. This yep. is a beautiful piece, and here let me bring it up on the screen here so people aren't just staring at. Uh, there we go. Tell me about this. You told me a little bit about it before we started to record. Um, what inspired this piece? Well, that was and by, the original painting is about six feet. By five feet it's huge oh, is it really do yeah. you paint in acrylics or oils both but mostly acrylic okay so the story with that painting was it was uh one of those uh self healing experiential kind of things i was working on i was making marks to represent my childhood or um making marks to represent the things that were important to me um and this being appeared, she manifested, and I am the clockmaker's daughter. Okay. Uh, but here's a here's the story. My father, well, he was a doctor, but uh, he built clocks. It was one of his hobbies. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was over 50 clocks in the house I grew up in. And in some rooms, there was like eight, nine clocks. None of them had the right time. Um, they all chimed every 15 minutes. So there was, it wasn't about a timekeeping device. It was like a living, breathing thing because it was ticking and it was like housed in this beautiful wood cabinet that yeah. he made. Yeah. And so the whole house was ticking and every 15 minutes or so there was chimes and gongs and bells going off, not in the bedrooms, but all over the house. And um, the funny part is, with all those clocks in our house, nobody in my family ever got anywhere on time. I mean, every one, every one of us was notoriously late. Wow. So it's just kind of funny to live in a house of clocks. I want to I want to mention your website here. I forgot to mention this at the beginning. It's Heart Songs Studio, and songs is spelled with a Z. Correct. And I'll put a link to it in, in the Thank description. You. And you, you just guys, that's a fascinating story. So this, <laughs> this is a... A painting about your father and or, or and and about yourself. Well, yeah, as the as the daughter of a clockmaker. Yes, and there, if you see closely when you look at the painting, there's like little gears in her wild hair, which if you hadn't noticed, my hair is kind of wild. Yeah, yeah. And um, my father used to say to me when I was a little girl, because I was, you know, I've always been a very creative uh, child, and he would say, "I could just see the gears turning when when I look at you." Yeah. So um, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to read you the poem that goes with that. Yeah, yeah, please do. She was a piece of work, and clockworks were part of her story. Never got anywhere on time. She was in her own category. Wearing magical glasses, she saw her inventions come alive. One side visionary perspective, the other to make ideas thrive. She'd visualize concepts and ideas and nurture them with care by opening her heart with her own key, which she carried everywhere. Her top hat was a secret portal that she used whenever she chose, allowing her to receive inspiration, and frequently the occasion arose. Her father built clocks and fine cabinets to house the moving gears. Her mother painted and wrote poetry for all her dearest dears. Many say she came by it rightly, and to that most have agreed. The clockmaker's daughter was an artist, twas in her blood indeed. She could breathe life into visions and watch as the seeds would grow, knowing which ones to harvest and nurture those in embryo. The red thread was running through her life and throughout her community, keeping her connected and creating art with every opportunity. She was a piece of work. And clockworks were part of her story. 
She never got anywhere on time. She was in her own category. Oh, wow. That's awesome. It almost has... <laughs> It, it has almost a feel of Dr. Seuss to it in a way. It tells kind of a, uh, about a creature almost. You're, you're, you're obviously not a creature, yeah. but that, that's awesome. Yeah. I just kind of created, uh, yeah, this semi-real uh, and semi-fictional character uh, based so, off of me. <laughs> so your hat, is your hat a portal? Yes, of course. <laughs> of course. And every canvas is a portal. Yes. Every canvas. A, yes, but this, you know, I have a thing for top hats. If, yeah. I like to wear them and uh, collect them. Uh, oh, this this one is a particularly cool one. It's particularly shabby. It's been around a long time. Um, it was gifted to me, and it was actually a, a owned by a vaudevillian oh, wow. uh, actor. So, well, it's a, a funny thing because um, it reminds. Well, there's the Alice in Wonderland had the Mad Hatter. Didn't oh yeah, they? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, and you've got goggles. I have. <laughs> I've got. Goggles. I, oh, I just, sweet. I just love the steam. Oh, thing. I love that. I've got ones that have lights in them and people can't see what I'm doing, but. Oh, well, you got to put them on, Peter. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you get to see my bald head. I got to see this. Are they like, uh, like faceted? So when you look at them, everything, it's like psychedelic? Yeah, these are, these are kaleidoscope goggles. Oh, so my like, like God. I need and... to have those. Oh, yeah. Where can I get me some? <laughs> I bought them online. I just got them off of the internet, off of uh, Etsy. Well, you'll have to show me where you found those. Those are fabulous. I've got a pair here that have lights in them. Oh, wow. Never mind. They, they, they light up. And uh, <laughs> I can do my glasses on. And, and you're the first person I've ever worn these for, other than my wife. She thinks I'm Oh, uh, uh, all right. Yeah, you got a little bit of a punk thing happening with the spikes there. I don't know. If it's, I'm kind of, of a closeted, like gothic person. When I was a kid, you were a go you were into goth. No, no. But when when I was a kid, it was called um, punk. I think it was. Oh, punk called. rock. I don't know. Really like it or not? But well, they're they're lighting up on the on the they? outer rims of them. Are they? They're like flashing. Oh blue. yeah, yeah. Woo! They, wow. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I was a total bohemian gypsy. Oh, okay. You know, into and, and all the, well, I grew up with the Beatles and yes. Joni Mitchell and, uh, you know, Crosby, Stills, and Nash and, uh, you know, all that, all that great, great singer songwriter stuff. Big Beatles fan. We, we have a guest. Oh yeah, that's that's uh. Is that George? That's George Beetle George from like nineteen sixty four. Sweet, is that an original? Yeah, it is. I, wow. I have a friend, his mother. <laughs> this was his mother's, and we were in high school, and I harassed the two of them until she finally says, <laughs> "Oh shit, the hell, and take it, just take just it, just take it." <laughs> so, so I, I, I've had it's worthless because it didn't have a button to go. Oh well. If it had the guitar. But it's it's you yeah, know it's, not, it's something that has sentimental yeah. value to you. <laughs> so well, it's... I actually um, saw the Beatles in concert live when I was a kid. I went to my first Beatle concert when I was in third grade on a school night. Wow. My See, I would never had... guess. You don't look, you're anywhere near <laughs> old enough to have seen the Beatles. Oh, believe me. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry with your story. Which story? Oh, about the Beatles, seeing the Beatles. <laughs> oh, saw the Beatles. We went, uh, my, sis my older sister and I yeah. took the rapid transit down on oh, a wow. school night. I can't believe my mother let us go on the rapid downtown Cleveland at night. Yeah. I mean, I would never let my kids do that. I, I don't even want to take the rapid transit at night. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we went down there and saw them twice. I think they came to Cleveland uh, twice. Yeah, they like public a couple hall year period. and public the stadium. Hall. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, wow. we were out there screaming and, yeah. and you know. That's, that's thrilling. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So yeah. you... Paint in acrylics, sometimes oils. And so what is the symbolism in some of your work? Because there seems to be a lot of like, I, I don't know if they call them hieroglyphics of some sort. There's, well, oh, the top hat's a common theme. Um, well, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of the symbols are channeled symbols that I, I, I you know, it's a little esoteric, but mm -hmm. I do um, channel light language. And um, what is light language? Okay, so it's called an angelic language. 
Some people call it light language or language of light. Some people call it speaking in tongues. I don't really uh, refer to it that way. Sure. I think that has more of a Christian uh, twist to it, which is not what my intention is. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to write it. It's like I kind of, when I'm painting, um, oftentimes I kind of get in an altered state. And it first started actually uh, when I was painting and I was just painting these symbols. And afterwards, I'm looking at the painting going, what did I just paint? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. And I'm yeah. looking on the internet. I'm trying to find, does this actually mean something? You know, I'm looking up. Some people say, yeah, sort of looks like runes, sort of like looks like this, but not quite. So finally, when I couldn't find what it was, I asked myself because I painted it. I said, what, what have I done here? And it was like another part of myself, my higher self, or the mm -hmm. observer laughed and said, well, it took you long enough. And they just said, that's light language. And huh. it's the language of light. And it's not meant to be specifically, uh, you know, the exact uh, interpretation of it. It's supposed to be just received. You don't need to, like, yeah. know what the translation is. but um, yeah, there's many symbols that are, are just intuitively, uh, I'm guided. Well, there's one piece I'm showing here called I Am Light. Oh, yes. Well, I'll tell and you the story about that there's one. There's just like so much going on in this painting. Okay. I'll tell you the story about that okay. painting. So that painting is called a legend painting. And it is like a self-portrait, but... It doesn't have to specifically look like you, although I've done more, you know, likenesses. But that was more just like the, like a soul portrait of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I started asking myself, well, who am I? Well, you know, I could do all the obvious labels. I'm a woman. I'm a she. I'm a her. I'm a wife. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. You know, I'm an American. I'm a Caucasian. You know, all those kind of things. But that's not who I am. Well, who am I? And so I just kept asking deeper and deeper. And finally, the thing that resonated and seemed to make the most sense is that I am light because we all are made of light, mm -hmm. you know, and before we come into form and when we leave, we go back to the light. So the painting is titled I am light. And it seemed like, and there's layers and layers and layers of all of my prayers and mm -hmm. things that I want for other people to receive when they look upon this painting. But there's um, figures on each side. The one in the middle is a being who's holding out a candle. And um, she's not saying like, look at me, I'm light. Like I'm on a billboard. It's more like she's humble. She has a, a cloak mm -hmm. and she's holding out the candle. And it's more like being a light bearer for other, like I'm, I'm holding out the light for you mm -hmm. to, to put a light on your path, whatever that path is. And then you'll notice the guardians holding out the, they're holding the lanterns and they are also cloaked and they are, there's the great light above her head, which is like, whatever that is mm -hmm. where creation mm -hmm. comes from. And we can't really see it. We can't really understand it. It's just, it's what it is, and it's it's beaming light onto the the guardians who are holding the lanterns, and it's beaming down to me holding the candle. But then there's these figures on either side, and the light beams are beaming over there. One is painting. She's painting uh, light symbols. That's light language. She's painting the light language. And so because I it's a it's a self portrait, so I am painting. The light and then the other figure is she's speaking and singing light and you see the symbols coming out of her mouth mm -hmm. um she's speaking and singing light and the other one is painting and writing light and and then the, the figure in the middle is just being light and then the little scrolls down at the bottom are like know thyself be the light because when people look upon that image some people cry or they just say, I don't know, I just feel so moved by this. Um, 
again, it's infused with a lot of intentions. Yeah, it's it's a very um, not surreal, but um, what is the word I want? I had it down here, ethereal, heavenly new age aesthetic to it, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and also the fact that it's all painted in blues and white, basically. I mean, there's other subtle colors in there, but um, it, I thought any other colors would take away from light. It's like painting with light. You know. Yeah, it has a very radiant quality, a very peaceful quality. When I see it, I feel very like, I'm kind of like you said, transported into kind of a different dimension or realm or something. It's a very calm serene feeling and all the lines connect it like i can't believe you didn't consciously plan this painting because it's all nicely balanced and and the the um the lines that connect the whole thing that leads your eye you're, you're always drawn back to the center figure but if you look over to the right the lines take you back up to the light the top back down yeah this is all Mumbo jumbo I learned in college. About. No, I understand what you're saying because I mean I've learned those in drawing classes yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. You want the the eye to have a focal point. Yeah. And you want like anything that's gonna lead the viewer back to so those connecting lines. You know, I mean I've incorporated things I've learned and things that I know, sure, but sure. also I think it all makes sense. It's it's a gorgeous piece. Now you're wearing your artwork. Yes, I am. That's beautiful. I mean, yeah, I don't the, know if this is a clockmaker's daughter. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just beautiful. I think I have it on my, I have it on my tote bag here too. Very nice. I sell these too. <laughs> yeah, I, I would think those would be really popular. This, um, both those paintings, um, and a, another one were just in the um, the woman show, mm -hmm. which was at um, Lakeland Community College, which is a big deal show here in the Cleveland yeah. region. And um, I heard about it several years ago and inquired, like, well, how do I enter that show? How do I get into uh -huh. that? And I was told, you don't. You have to be invited into it. And um, fortunately, I was invited and was in it this this year, earlier this year. Awesome. Congratulations. I know I haven't been to Lakeland in a long time. I grew up in Cleveland Heights and then moved to Chardon, so I'm okay. more familiar with Lakeland. And uh, I know the art shot there is really popular. Mary Urbis, the curator there in the gallery at Lakeland, um, she uh, finds like the most extraordinary women artists here in the region and invites them uh, to be in this show. And I have to also um, bring up a comment about women in the arts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, historically, only 2% of women have been represented in museums and galleries still to this day. Really? Still to this day, 2% of women are represented. Um, and it's, it's very sad. And uh, so the fact that Mary Urbis started this uh, show in our region here, uh, I believe 16 years ago, mm -hmm. and several other, other galleries have followed suit and have their version of women's shows, which I've been in quite a few of them, but... It was uh, a great honor to be in that one, and I'm also very involved with this organization, uh, Intentional Creativity uh, Musea, which they have their own museum, and it's uh, run by women, and it's only women artists. So I, I'm a big uh, supporter of uh, women in the arts, and uh, we need to have an equal voice, you know, because we have just as much creative you know oh, uh, sure, contribution sure. i think it's important to being a woman to uh use my voice you know to oh, yeah um, yeah i'm um, also i don't want to get into political stuff with my art but i do think that women men or anybody who identifies anything in between there um should be empowered and that's what i try and infuse into um, my artwork, like I said, visual prayers, because even if they don't understand the story or my personal mm -hmm. intentions, sure, and sure. I don't even, I used to have to try and explain it to people. And if they ask, I'll tell. But um, now I think it's more important what the viewer takes away from that. And it could be sure. something different, but 
the, hopefully to view the artwork, to see it displayed is to give them a sense of being empowered. It's, um, it's not just pretty background art. Sure. It's, um, something that it sparks inquiry and conversation and gnosis, you know, or, um, metacognition, thinking about what you're thinking about, you know, having conversation, which, um, gets you to, to un understand or think about something or just go, I don't know what it is. And I just like it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not just like, um, pretty background stuff. You know? now, I'm looking at one of your pieces here called knowing myself. And uh -huh. this is just a fascinating piece. Now, this is a self-portrait, correct? Uh, to yeah. some degree. Yeah. Um, that one was, uh, and that's the one where she's on a, she's kind of on a tightrope that's on fire. Oh, and, oh yeah. And her yeah. dress uh, she is on f fire. And she is um, a conduit. She's reaching up and receiving inspiration, holding her illuminated paintbrush. And she's also reaching down with her tambourine, like keeping the rhythm, holding down, like grounding to the earth, keeping the rhythm, reaching up, receiving. Um, and she is, if you look at all the symbols mm -hmm. and you see her body's kind of transparent and you see she's kind mm -hmm. of in a, like an embryonic uh, oval, it's like, uh, it's like the recipe of me. You know what I mean? The recipe of me. These are all um, the components, the uh, experiences, the mm -hmm. history. And the oval could represent birth or the egg or, yeah. or, the, or the womb. Right. And all those symbols that are painted yeah. around the blue oval, those are, that's all light language. And many of those symbols are light language. It's, it's a beautiful use of, of colors and the way you've created this like fire uh, like her dress is almost like fire. It is. It's her, she's on yeah. fire and she's dancing on a tightrope of flames. You see the, uh, the yeah. observer up in the corner too, that face with the eyes closed. Let me go back here. Oh yes. In the that's upper left hand corner. Yeah. That's the observer. And we all have an observer. Huh. And, uh, yeah, then there's a prayer actually written in there. It's not in light language. It's actually painted right on the, under the moon, you see the, there's yes. words, there's yeah. a whole prayer in there. Uh, and my intention is no one has to try and figure out what the symbols mean. It's, it's just written there what it is. And if you want to see some of her work on the internet, go to Heart Songs Studio. That's Heart so Songs with a Z. I'll put a link to it here. And this is just some beautiful work. Um, are you playing music still do you play out live anywhere i have not been playing out live in, in like five or six years mm -hmm. i've devoted myself full time to my art but a uh, uh, kind of crazy thing happened about four years ago i was in the middle of painting and i was not planning on it and mm -hmm. i started writing songs that went with the paintings and um so I, I released an album. It's called My Compass Journey. And it's not like a genre of music. That mm -hmm. is kind of like those songs are like the soundtracks for the paintings. And there, I mean, there's lyrics and stories. But um, that's an interesting story, too, um, because I did this series of paintings, which mm -hmm. um, was like a vision quest. And it started, like, if you were going to go on a, on a journey, you would start in the center, right? And fig, you know, figure out where you're going and then you'd find North. And so there's a painting which represents where I am, where I begin. And the North painting is my muse. And it was during the muse painting that I started getting the, the download of light language and writing songs. Then we went to the east, and I claimed myself for um, being an artist and also um, reweaving in the fragments of things that, you know, we all have trauma and painful things in our life that have caused us to fragment. And I went and uh, 
kind of gathered the fragments of myself, uh, uh, broken things that had broken away because of trauma, and oh, sure. called them back in. And then uh, in the South is where I noticed that I was changing and people were seeing me differently. And uh, that painting is was my, called Alchemy. And it has to do with uh, connecting with where I'm getting information. And like, I don't necessarily get all my information from the internet or books. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get downloads like... Uh, I just get knowing stuff. Um, I I get poetry. I get songs. I get ideas and images. Mm -hmm. um, and that song was a particularly beautiful song called "Lady of the Stars" that goes with that uh, painting. And it's a painting of a woman who's kind of made of stardust. And is that on this website? Is it yeah. On no, 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 no. That one is not on that one. Okay. Sorry, but she's like playing her own heartstrings. And uh, there's a dolphin in that painting. I'm not sure if it's on that website. It might be. Um, it's just about connecting with um, where you get your guidance from. And then in the end, the visionary, that one's definitely on the website. Um, we go to the West, and that's where I connect with being a visionary and speaking my truth. And that painting is a woman who is empowered. She's lit up. She's on fire. Her heart is like on fire. Flames coming up out of her heart, and yet it's covered with honeycomb, and the honey is dripping off of it, and the little honeybees are fluttering around, and there's one giant queen bee there, and it's like, I am the queen bee. I am claiming my own power, and I am lit up, and that's the song Visionary Woman. And yeah, so I go through these like, metaphysical, you know, uh, journeys. Some people say, well, what are you taking? You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, what are you smoking? Um, you know, been there, done that, but I don't need to, um, because I mean, uh, painting puts me into this altered state. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know. I paint not like what I'm um, more traditional stuff, but when I paint, it's like I go into this different. Yeah, you go it's, into it's the like zone. It's like meditation. Yeah, when I, it's different when I play guitar or when I do this. Yeah, guitar is a whole different zone, but painting is just like. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. It's like I'm not not present anymore. Well, try, even like. When you even make it more of a ceremony, like I said, creating sacred space. I mean, when you approach the whole thing, you light the candle, uh -huh. or you you know you. You, you do things which represent that I'm, I'm creating something and I'm allowing mm -hmm. this imagery or these ideas, you know, I, I, I approach it as a, as a ritual or as a sure. sacred uh, experience. And that's why I think, you know, I just kind of go into this altered state um, and, re and get these downloads. Yeah. You've got some beautiful music. I, I was going to try to play some today, but I couldn't get the audio. But check out... Juniper's music as well. It's really amazing stuff. Thank you. What do you have planned? What do you have coming up in the near future or down the road? I am busy uh, trying to produce art. I've been painting a lot yeah. and trying to get merchandise. I'm going to be doing my very first uh, show, like in an art open market kind of thing, for the Willoughby Arts Festival. There's supposed to be oh, over nice. 7,000 people there. So wow. I'm busy painting and, you know, getting prints made and merchandise, totes, mugs, that kind of thing. Um, I have been in a lot of art shows. I actually am going, when I leave here today, I'm going to drop some art off. Okay. I'm, you know, still doing the juried shows. Oh, and I should mention that I am a Stella's artist. I'm Stella's Art Gallery in Willoughby. There's over 70 artists there, and I'm, I'm one of them. And I have uh, a little uh, uh, space there with some wall space. Yeah. A little storefront there. And um, I have originals and prints and merchandise. Oh, that's excellent. And uh, so, you know, in between that and just uh, trying to keep up with all my stuff, you know, I'm, I'm always growing, working on um, developing my skills as an artist. You've got some beautiful work. Have you have you tried the Kane Park Arts Festival? No, Kane you Arts? know, the, my very first uh, 
art festival is coming up in Willoughby. Okay. But um, yeah, it's too late to to apply for the cane park, and then yeah. you have to have the tent and the yeah. display yeah. and all that stuff. So yeah. I'm 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 a late comer, but I'm 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 getting it together. <laughs> oh, it's awesome! No, you guys, I think your work will go over well uh, at and any art show. It's just just a well, fascinating thank you. look. It's Sometimes very vibrant, it, positive. Sometimes I think that Northeast Ohio, maybe um, I'm a little too woo woo or something for well, the people around here you know yeah, they're a little more conservative you know? yeah they're uh, we're all kind of stuck back in another decade i think here and i think you 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 should try to go mobile go to new mexico and california and oh, yeah i have a big uh fan following out west you oh know? yeah and yeah. and in europe yeah uh, northeast ohio is still trying to figure out what visionary art is and yeah, what yeah. you know medicine <laughs> painting what and, yeah. you know, but, you know, I do have uh, lots of people who are, you know, supportive and, and follow me. Um, I'm growing my my Instagram page, my Facebook page, and my website. Um, um, yeah, and the website, um, you can actually order prints and merchandise there. If you want to buy uh, original paintings, usually uh, I do that in person. Okay. Yeah, I've got the website back up here. Well, Juniper, it's been awesome having you coming down here. Uh, your your work is just amazing. You've got a beautiful voice too. I haven't had a chance to talk to you about your music, but this has been awesome. Thank you so much for coming down. Thank and you very much. I hope we can keep in touch. I'll send you some so. of some of my paintings. They're not as good as yours, but um, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Peter. I love being here. Yeah, awesome. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. You too.